Hey there, it's Zephyr here, and I just wanted to do another video today uh, for our our weekly sort of videos here. I was going to do one about cutscenes today, and then I've realised, okay, what if uh, we want to put custom custom characters into the game? Um, so essentially, instead of doing a video on cutscenes this week, I decided to do one about inserting custom content. Uh, just so you're aware, this will only cover content uh mostly for rpg maker mv or mz uh just because for the reason of this um kind of xp as well but not to an extent um but the, the thing with mv and mz is uh they can allow for uh, differently sized um differently sized tiles and things like that one thing to just bear in mind when you're creating a character set that is uh, a little bit of a different size to what you're working with as one, it's not going to have collision around the area. So we got 48 by 48 tile. That's the standard tile size uh, for RPG Maker MZ and MV. Uh, there is an update in MZ that is changing some of that very slightly. So that's exciting. Um, but in terms of things, just remember that when you create uh, an enemy that's sort of like, let's say they're like nine tiles wide. So you just see where I'm clicking here. It's either about that, that big. The only part that's going to be solid is the actual character I'm clicking on here. or well, that would be the only part there. So make sure you just bear that in mind when you're doing that. And uh, maybe either relegate them to cutscenes, make them stationary, um, and put collision around them. There is also plugins that you can get um, that will... Uh, will make them a little bit, uh, give them a bigger hitbox, but that, that is one of those things that where your mileage may really vary. Um, so let's get into this. So I figured I'd do this while I was, um, sort of just going at this casually. I was like, you know, this is, this is, uh, uh, a good thing that I can show people while I'm here. First of all, I use a sprite for, um, a lot of my pixel art shenanigans and everything like that. So if you don't own a sprite, um, it is, it, it, it is a paid software. You can compile it for free, uh, if you know how to do that. I don't, um, it is on Steam. It's not very expensive. It is a very good piece of software if you're looking to do your own content. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. So this is kind of a work in progress enemy of mine, uh, that I was working on. This is the Time Armor. It's an enemy, uh, in my game called Armor of the Abyss. Um, and he has, uh, he has a couple of forms, so I already drew one, drew what his, like, concept was on the, on the right-hand side here, uh, with both of his forms, and then I kind of just, like, drew the actual in-game character sets in here. And I really want to, like, put them actually in the game right now, so what I'm going to do is, uh, I will just select this guy. Aligners, let's select the correct image. There we go. Right, so we'll just select this here. We'll just select a little time dude. I don't know why I actually did it on the sheet because there's no reason to. Uh, but just use the reflection tool. There's like a little reflection tool here for symmetry. Let's copy merged and go file new. And um, this is kind of roughly our size that we want. I think I'll just keep the size as it is just because um, in case I want him to animate, I likely won't. Maybe the fire, um, but I likely won't make him animate. Um, but say I wanted to have this guy, this really big guy in game. I'm going to shuffle him down like a couple of pixels. So we've done that. Just selected the guy, shuffled him down a couple of pixels. And then um, what we would do is we'd look at the width and the height of this object. So you can see in the bottom left, actually you're not going to see because my face is in the way. Um, so let's see, I can move this slightly. Uh, oh yeah, you can kind of see it now, but where my cursor is right there, you can see 172 by 174. Now normally you'd get a calculator out and you'd have to work out the width and height um, to make a grid. When you look at a grid, 
Let's give you an example here. So here's Adana. This is the main character from my game. So a typical MV MZ sprite is going to be three tiles facing forward, three left, three right, and then some facing up there. Um, we don't have to do different directions for this guy, but we do need to make his actual sprite conform to a character set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go sprite and then canvas size. There's a really cool trick that you can do in a sprite, and it's the reason why I like using this program quite a lot, is if you put star 3, so it's already doing the math for you, it's multiplying the width by 3, and that you do star 4, and you make sure you have that little pip corner hit, so just pause it from the corner. You've already got the right size right here. And then if you go view grid, grid settings, and you do 172 by 174, I think we got this correct, hopefully. Um, that makes the grids perfectly sized there. So uh, I'm just going to move him here. It is a lot of wasted empty space here, but because he's only got a forward facing sprite, that's kind of how it is. I could use a picture, and that's entirely up to you. But just for the purposes of this, I'm just going to show you how this is done. So, this is my character. If you have a character set standing on its own, you need to put a specific symbol at the start of the image, and that is a dollar sign, and then followed by what it is. So, we'll call this the time beast. Um, might want to use a, a, a better file name. This is the file name I use, so there's Time Beast. So there he is pretty much done. The really nice thing about a sprite is you can double click uh, any squares in the grid you made and just move the, the guy around. So if you found you moved him into the wrong square, then you can do that. It's it's pretty cool. Um, but that's, that's that. So if we go into our engine now, and I try and put him in. Unfortunately, this map isn't quite the best. Um, but let's find our time beast. There's the time beast. There he is. I'm just going to disable this event. So I should disable it. And we're just going to see what he's like. I I'm a little bit upset by how asymmetrical this map is, but we'll just deal with that for now. I'll hit play. And there he is. So if you wanted to do your very own Pokemon encounter, there you go. Uh, this is my dude. As I said, there's no collision. What you might want to have, what you might have to do is obviously um, put some X's around that. I'll sh um, next time I make a video, I'll do a, I'll, I'll do some tips on how to do some collision. Another thing that you could do is, and this is something that I've messed with. Um, you can either do it with an events or the tile set itself, but like how I've done this question mark to denote a, like a cutscene, which I'll go into next time. Um, there's also, if I go here, I also have an icon to denote things like traps, immovable immo objects, and you could put this in a tile set as well, which I have done uh, for one of my tile sets, but just not in this example. Um, so yeah, that is that is one way you can just quickly put enemies in or, or create um, create your own custom character set um, that will work in game. Um, if you wanted one that animated, I could show you one that I've made earlier that animates. Um, but typically, it's not something to worry about too much. Um, in fact, I'll tell you what, we'll let... Uh, discard this event and we'll take you to uh, our good old test map here. So you have a test map with a bunch of common tiles and you can see here already in this map that there are a bunch of TV sets custom made, they animate. Um, there are a bunch of torches, they have their own frame frames, again these are things that I've made. Um, and there's also a custom waterfall I made as well. So using the same strategy. Um, 
So I'll show you them in game and then I'll show you them in East Sprite. As on my chests, if you didn't watch my last video about uh, loot boxes, uh, I did actually uh, give out that sprite for free. Um, but yeah, you can see my waterfalls here, uh, my custom waterfalls, um, my custom TV sets. They got some have got evil faces on, some don't. And then there's the little torches. I think the torches are animating a little bit fast, but uh, that's just an example of of what you can do with that. Also, there's a flag. And if I go back into a sprite again, if we go back into a sprite, I can show you. Do 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 do. Yes, so you can see right here. That's my torch animation, and um, that's pretty much it. Something very quick, um, probably not appropriate to really bring up in this video, but I'm going to just do it anyway. Uh, if you want further learning today. Uh, if you do want to actually animate something, you can copy a sprite into a document. Do file near. Uh, just at the bottom here, I don't know if you can see it. Actually, you're not going to be able to. Let me move my thing again. Right here where you see the layer um, and this little frame that says 1. You can right click it and hit new frame. And... Um, you can then switch between those frames as they're different frames in an animation and you can edit them separately. So just for imagine for a second I draw like a big... Uh, if I get my hotkeys right, if I draw like a big line here, you're gonna see it. You're gonna see it on frame two but you're not gonna see it there. So you can use that as an opportunity to actually make amendment. So if I wanted this guy to like maybe shut his mouth, then I could just go here, grab his mouth, shut it. And another thing you can do even further is you can hit select and hit um, save to MSK, type in mouth, save that, hit new frame again. So, right, we've got three frames now and I'm just going to blow your mind. This is this is extra learning here. So load, load from MSK. We load our mouth. So it's loading that selection. So now we can grab that mouth. And then do it again here. Select. Load from MSK. Select the mouth. And now, if I just go ahead and I correct these little parts here. I'm not an animator, by the way, but I'm just showing you quickly how to do small amendments in a sprite, which I think is really handy. Um, and that's pretty much it. So if you look here, you can play it. He's got like his little mouth moving. That's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that's just sort of like the basics to the, the sort of individual frames. So if you actually did want to make your character animate, um, you can do that. Uh, if you want an example of how my workflow usually works for creating tile sets, I'll show you exactly how I do it. So if I go into, go into characters. Go to animated sets. There's going to be a very useful set here. Where is it? I see one. Um, so again, I, I'm not amazing at animating, but uh, yeah, well, I'll tell you what, we use the BM2 as an example. So this is how my workflow usually works because this design is actually asymmetrical. I had to do a different like side frame because only half of her body is like covered in this armor. Um, but yeah, this is how my, my workflow works. If I hit play, I can see them move, I can see them move. And then I just kind of like put them onto a sheet once I was done. Um, so yeah, that's how you can do animated character sets. Use lots of, I, I'm not going to teach you how to draw in this video. Uh, you're going to need lots of references and things like that. But, um, I figured this was kind of helpful enough and maybe this will help inspire you uh, to import custom tiles. You don't have to 
draw for this kind of things if you're just importing custom objects and that's fine um but yeah that's something that i really want to show you today i'm gonna carry on i'm gonna finish importing my time beast and uh we'll or maybe do a video on on cutscenes i think that's gonna be pretty exciting um so that's pretty much it for me today it's been zephyr and um have a have a good day guys thank you so much for watching if you found this video useful uh feel free to share it with your friends um and if you have a question that you want me to answer um feel free to leave a comment below it might be featured in a future video um that's really all i have to say thank you so much for your time